How we doing? Welcome to Friday Night Barbecue Party. Every Friday night we have the best barbecue party in town, in the land, in the nation, on the continent, and in the world. And I am Montana Max. Thank you for joining us here, spending some time on your Friday. And let's get to cooking. Let's start making some good food. That's why everyone tunes in, right? Because they want to make some good food. They want to hang out, have some drinks, and have a good time. That's what it's all about, right? And let's get our weekend kicked off right. Tonight we have some real fun recipes that we're going to be making up. Super easy, super unique. The Duchess is here. Woo! Let's party! I love it. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to be doing buffalo style chicken and buffalo style beef. Mark Brick, thank you for coming back, my brother. It's always a pleasure to see you. Awesome. I am uh, ready to kick off my weekend, and I am glad you here uh, are here, rather, with us. I've only had one beer, and I'm already talking like I'm six deep. I'm glad you're here with us, because we're going to have some fun today. I actually just got a YouTube message from our videos, because we upload them about uh, 28 hours after we do our, our deal on Twitch here, and a lady told me, I've only got 100 years on this planet, less chop-chop, less talk-talk, but fabulous results. So anyways, we should jump into what we're doing. I'm going to be making buffalo chicken and buffalo beef. But we're not just going to buffalo it up as good as buffalo is. Everyone loves a good buffalo sauce, right? What I'm going to be doing tonight is we're going to be making buffalo meatballs that are smoked. What? You're in your kitchen. You're inside. Look it. New camera angle, too. You can see me. So dance a samba. So dance a samba. What? What? So dance a samba. Right? That above view. Pretty nice. So you can get a view of the cutting board, what we're doing down here, and a view of our stove back here. But we are going to be doing smoked meatballs on one of my favorite devices. I've got a Nordic Ware indoor smoker. That's right. We are going to do hickory smoked buffalo beef meatballs tonight. And then we are also going to be doing uh, some lovely, it's quite refined, buffalo chicken croissants. Yes? Yes. So make sure you got your drink. Cheers to you. Make sure you treat yourself as you go along because you're doing great. That's my deal. You're doing great. You're doing great. Treat yourself. And we might as well jump into it. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get our smoker going. These are great. I'll show you what this looks like. It kind of looks like a little red kettle, like you would use uh, your Weber with the charcoal. Look at that. Isn't it adorbs? It's totally adorbs. And let's flip her on over here, give you a better view, bring that up main. Oh, hi, hi, how y'all doing? I'm doing just fine. So inside of this beautiful little Nordic Ware thing, we've got our main smoking tray which is where our meatballs will reside. And just like uh, a Weber Smoky Mountain, if you will, uh, it does underneath. I'm going to use a little assistance here to prop this out because it sits in there so well. Nice and tight. There we go. Underneath, we have a little water pan to help maintain moisture, keep moisture in the dish. And underneath that is where we're going to put our wood. And of course, like all those true blue barbecue enthusiasts around the world, we're going to be using hickory. I'm going to flip her back here. You can catch it in the corner, what I'm doing. That's right. I've got many cords of hickory stored in containers like this. Let's flip her back. And I should have the angle. There we go. Look at that. Little hickory wood chips. Skulls and Bones, thanks for joining us, brother. I am just displaying my Nordic Ware indoor smoker, and if I remember correctly, you have a gas grill. This is a great way, because not only can this be used on your stovetop, but this can be used on your gas grill to smoke things outside as well. You can put this Nordic Ware uh, indoor smoker right on the grates of your gas grill, and brother, yeah, totally. It's a sweet little thing. And Nordic Ware is like local to Minnesota, easy to find, it's everywhere. Uh, you can put this right on your gas grill and get that smoked uh, flavor into whatever you're cooking. And so we're going to take a couple spoonfuls. I'm just going to use my hand here. 
and put some hickory wood chips right in the middle. We don't need a lot. We don't want to start a fire. We learned last week what happens when you start fires on Friday night barbecue party. Food turned out great though. Jen was a little scared. Were you not? Jen was a little scared. All right. So we got our wood chips in the bottom. We're using a little hickory. You can use whatever flavor wood chip. They're not your traditional wood chips. These are not the kind that you would buy at the hardware store. They are flakes, like tiny little flakes. We don't need to create a ton of smoke and I'm gonna turn the fan on the stove so we don't set off the smoke alarm. So let's get that going right from the beginning because the natural heat of the oven will ignite those little chips and they will burn on the bottom. Uh, they won't flame up because they're just little micro bits of wood and that'll create lovely smoke inside this chamber. Now for the water pan, you can put water in there and it'll help maintain moisture of whatever you're cooking inside but water is boring. It's fall, it's time for fireside flannel. So we're gonna be using fireside flannel by Liftbridge Brewing. And that's what we're gonna fill our water pan with. You could use apple cider or just apple juice if you wanted. I have a couple of Weber Smoky Mountains. I put about everything you can think of in the water pan. It's just fun to do. Then you're cooking with beer and you're drinking with beer. I love that beer because it's Friday night barbecue party. And if you don't have a drink, you're doing it wrong. All right, so we've got that assembled. Bam. Lovely brown ale. Grab yourself some of that if you can. And then we are going to go ahead and put the grate back in. And very carefully, of course, Transfer it back to the stove. And we'll put our nice little red cover on this. But first, before I do that, we're gonna spray the grate. Because we don't want our meatballs sticking. All right, let's get the lid on. We've got a thermometer right on the top of this bad boy. Mmm, lift bridge, Homer Simpson style. And let's go ahead and fire that burner up. We don't need super high heat. We're gonna take it down to about a medium there and let that start warming up. And then those wood chips will slowly start embering, slowly start igniting. It's not gonna be a ton of smoke. That's why it's just a little wood dust in there to create the smoke, all right? Awesome. Everyone with me? Good. I'm just gonna pretend like you said, yeah. All right, so they're gonna take the longest to cook, so that's why we're gonna start with the meatballs. That's why we're gonna get those rolling. Because we're going low and slow, baby. Low and slow, true barbecue style. We're inside and we're barbecuing, low and slow. Who would have thought it? In Minnesota, with the week we've had with the weather, we've had about a foot of snow, we've had thunderstorms, we've had rain, we've had freezing rain. You gotta find ways to get your fix on the barbecue, even if you're inside. And that's why we're not outside tonight. It is above freezing, but where we typically film when we're doing our outside cooking is absolutely drenched because the deck above, all that snow that we got a couple days ago, about nine inches is melting through and it's absolutely a mess. So here we go. Meatballs, beef style. I'm gonna grab a little knife and knife and we're using a little Revere cattle, local here to Minnesota, Black Angus. And let's get our beef in the bowl. This is the nice thing about cooking in the kitchen though, is I've got a sink, all these high class amenities that I'm not used to outside. All right, beef's in, break it up a little bit. And we're going to add, what? Mad Dog. How we doing? Happy Friday, Mad Dog. Thanks for joining us, brother. We're going to add some things to our meatballs to help get them stick together, especially since we're cooking them long time, uh, low and slow. So we don't want them to fall apart in there. No, we do not. So I'm going to do a little preppy preppy here. 
Uh, let's get this egg out of the way. When you're making meatballs for one pound of hamburger, you want one egg. Mark Brick, thank you so much for the subscribe, my man. You are our first subscriber. Got the horses in the back. Horse stock is a pack. I love it. That's a good Daddy's there mad at black. Go. Got the boosters black to match. Awesome. Right. Thank you much. Yeah. I didn't yeah, own a horse. Ha, you can whip your horse. You read my mind. Now we got a party. We got the I've been in the valley. You ain't going. been up all that. So let's add an egg in there. And we do have the bread crumb. We're going to wait on that just a second because my favorite is everyone loves to see me cut an onion. Yes, I know. The audience right now is like, that's what we tuned in for. O-M-G. He's going to cut an onion again. Onion is such a great flavor device. You got to add a little onion to your meatballs. So let's do that real quick while we're getting here. Oh, get that outside off. Hopefully I don't all tear up like we did last time when we were cutting up an onion. We don't want that. We don't want that. Yeah, that's right, baby. Number one. Number one indeed. All right, come on, onion. Work with me. Work with me, baby. As always, you'll see an appearance by my trusty sidekick tonight. Not just Jen. She's my number one sidekick, of course. But of course, Spoonie McSpoonerson's going to be here as well. Spoonie is developing his own fan base. I think uh, Spoonie has uh, aspirations to start his own Instagram account at some point. Could be a pretty big deal. I mean, he might just take over the show. It could happen. Oh, onion skin. There we go. All right. So we're making mini meatballs, though. These are going to be these. This I had a <laughs> I had a tough time deciding, right? What I was going to do with these meatballs. I was like. Is it party food or is it game day smokedown food? What am I going to do? What show am I going to put it on? Is it going to be Sunday? Is it going to be Friday? I was so conflicted inside. So I had a little drink and I was like, you know what? It's a Friday food. Today, it's a Friday food because this Sunday we're making bacon. It's been curing in the fridge all week. If you saw our special little event on Monday, we took a whole pork belly, cured that bad boy up. It's right in the fridge right now. We want to make sure you catch that on Sunday because we're going to turn that into bacon and then use it in some awesome game day food. Thick cut candied bacon, all kinds of good stuff. All right. I got my lovely uh, Santuco knife by Gunter Wilhelm, of course. We're going to just chop this up real fine. Howdy, partner. Hey, Buff Bagel. Buff Bagel. Thank you for the follow. I got to give the Buff Bagel the gun of approval there. Thank you, Buff Bagel. I'm imagining what a Buff Bagel <laughs> had to sub because of the beard alone. Well, thank you, my man. Thank you so much. I'm pretty proud of my beard myself, so I appreciate the compliment. Awesome. Uh, I gotta have to go check out Buff Bagel's channel because I am really hoping there is a Buff Bagel is his profile picture. That would be super dope. If not, get in touch with me. We yes, yes, he does. Oh my God, he does. Do you see that, babe? Do you see the Buff Bagel? It's like the superhero we needed in 2020. It's not Superman. It's not Batman. It's Buff Bagel in a world where things are upside down. There was only one hero that could save us, and that was Buff Bagel. Awesome. Thank you so much, brother. So glad you're here. All right, let's get this onion going, because we got a lot of delicious food to make. Both these recipes, not super deep. Anybody can do them. Super easy to do, and they don't take a lot of time. They always take more time, because I'm chatting with my homies at the party. But that's what's great about them, too. It's like not super complex. You don't need a, a super amount of ingredients or anything like that. So you can accomplish these while you're hanging out, having some drinks, all that kind of good stuff. Excuse me for one quick second there. Babe, you're going to have to like keep me up on the deal because I'm losing my, my chat frame here. There's my mouse. He messages. Bam. Oh, awesome. He made it himself. He made that logo himself. 
kudos. All right. Man, don't, don't be. It's, it, it's mostly duct taped together. <laughs> it's like MacGyver. But I appreciate that, man, you know. I really do love our kitchen. That was one of the things when we, uh, all Kansas City, Jan and I, when we got this house, we really love this kitchen. And uh, I'm just glad to utilize it to its fullest potential because at that point, I really wasn't in the cooking game like I am now, was I, babe? No. All right. So there we go. There we go. Choppa choppy. Half an onion for one pound. That's plenty. Depends on the size of your onion, of course. Uh, and let's get that onion in there because that's going to add some awesome flavor. We got the egg in there. As our friends did say, we are going to add also some breadcrumbs. That helps keep everything together. Don't be bashful about it. Give it a nice little shake, shake. Bam, lid on. Now, of course, what do I always say? What do I always say? Season everything. You've got to season everything, right? If it's your salad, season it. If it's your water and your boiling pasta, please, please season it. Do it. Do it a favor. Season it. And treat yourself when you cook. You're doing good. You're doing good. What do I want to season it with? What do I want to season it with? Choose a little Kansas City rub here for my girl, Kansas City Jen. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. She's got her seltzer over there. She's got like a fort made out of our chairs. It's awesome. She's like, I've got a streaming fort. Anybody else have a streaming fort? Let me know in the comments. So let's season that up. A little Croy Valley, Kansas City. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling shitty, just season it up with a little Kansas City. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. And you can be heavy handed with the seasoning because it's not a salt first seasoning. There's so many different barbecue rubs and things out there on the market where look at the ingredients. The number one ingredient is salt, man. That's not a good rub. What's in this seasoning? Well, let's flip it over here. There we go. Sugars, granulated garlic, a little dried pepper, spices. Uh, full disclosure, I do work at Croy Valley. All right. So, uh, I'm not allowed to tell you all the proprietary spices that we use in our product, but let me tell you this. Go to CroyValleyFoods.com, check it out. Uh, there's actually a big sale coming up called Croismas, and uh, that's the time to especially jump on it because we're going to be running super good savings. Uh, telling you, you can win some really cool prizes. But uh, yeah, and it's Cro Croismas, yes. <laughs> It's kind of like Festivus, if you're a Seinfeld fan at all. So we made our own holiday. All right, and then we're going to get in there with our hands, and we're going to mix all this up, all that good seasoning, our onions. I'm going to add just, if you find too much liquid, right, too much liquidy, which that egg I'm seeing is a little liquidy, just add more breadcrumbs. That's what you want to do. You want to continue to add breadcrumbs to get the consistency you want. I always start a little less, right? Because you can always add more. You can always add more. Harder than hell to take it out, though. There we go. Now we're getting to where I want it. Now we're getting to where I want it. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be so, so good. Mmm. Maybe just a little bit more breadcrumbs. Oh, sure. Thank you. I get, I get a little excited when I'm seasoning. Let's flip it over. I'll even put it up here so you can see it a little bigger. So get in there with your hands, man. Put on some gloves if you don't like the feel of meat. I wear gloves when I do this, not only for sanitary purposes, because I'm touching a lot of different stuff and I can just run through these. Uh, I mean, if you're at home, just wash your hands or whatever. There we go. But get in there and work it. Get in there and really work all that stuff together because we want people to get a nice, even bite of food. You don't want them to get one big hunk of spice or one big hunk of onion or a pocket of onions. Get in there, kind of fold it over, and that's how you're going to know really too 
what consistency that you're at. Because we we're going to roll this up and we're going to make it into beautiful, delicious meatballs. All right. So I'm going to grab a, a plate here. So I got a little place for my Howdy, meatballs. Partner. That's right. Hey, Twitch level one 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 one. Thank you so much for the follow. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. That is so rad. All right. Here we go. Here I go. Here I go. Here I go again. That's my horrible attempt at the salt and pepper. All right. We'll throw this guy over here too, so you can see it. I'll be more conscious of that for easy viewing. And let's roll up some mini meatballs. Remember, as these cook, they are going to shrink in size because they will lose some moisture. We want cute, cute little meatballs, right? There we go. Bam. Meatball. Just like you were a kid again and playing with, like, freaking Play-Doh. And then you can put, like, a cute little toothpick in it or something like that to display them. Great little finger food, great little party snack. Super easy to do. And if you're not a chatty Cathy like me, you would have been done with this 15 minutes ago. All right, here we go. But we're having fun, we're having fun. Mmm, smells good already. I can't wait to get these guys tasting the smoke. That is going to be awesome. And I'll flip her back uh, here in a minute so you can see the big view. And then hopefully when I pull the lid off, by now we should be seeing a little smoke coming out uh, from the wood chips in the bottom of our indoor smoker. Yeah, that's right. If you just joined us, we're using an indoor smoker. It's awesome little Nordicware uh, device that you just use. It's almost a, a wood dust. It's not dust. It's got particulates that's bigger than a dust, and we're using hickory in there. And we're going to give that smoke flavor to these meatballs. And, of course, we're going to buffalo them up. Or, as they said, in Dances with Wolves, Totonka. Buff? Totonka. Buffalo! All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Couple more, couple more. We're gonna use. <laughs> All right, and if you uh, are not at the age that I am and have not seen Dances with Wolves, uh, you've probably seen Avatar, same storyline. So you have seen it. All right. Great consistency. I'll hold these up to the camera once I take my gloves off so you can see. We want all these to be as close to the same size as possible. I'm trying to hustle along because we do have another uh, couple recipes to get to this evening. But once these are on, we're going to be cooking them at a temperature where they can ride for a long time. It's one of those things where you can do some other things, let them go, let them do their thing, let these flavors marinate together. You find your meatball breaking up when you roll it, just give it a smash. Just smash it. Naughty meatball, right? And then go back to your rolling. It'll behave if you're patient and you just work it. Like the way you work it. Babe? Babe, do you like the way I work it? Always, she says. We're going to get Jen on a mic here, back in, back in the mix here. Just waiting for a little part to come in, as they say. And then you can hear her dialogue in the background as I'm up here making meatballs and things like that. And then she keeps me in line and I behave. If you just joined us, we're making buffalo beef and chicken tonight. We're doing a buffalo beef meatball. That's right. Everyone's favorite buffalo sauce on a Friday night party. Last meatball. Bam. 
And then we're going to do some awesome buffalo chicken uh, croissants. It's a buffalo chicken pastry dish, but an awesome appetizer, awesome finger food. Before I switch that camera back, let me present. There's our little tray of meatballs. How easy is that? See, a uniform size. You don't really like buffalo style. That's all right. So if you don't like buffalo style, which some people don't, there's people that aren't fans of buffalo style, uh, you can make this exact same recipe, right? And just sub your favorite barbecue sauce. And then you do it barbecue style. And that's really easy to do. Jen's not a big fan of uh, buffalo, but you know what? That's great you bring it up because you know what? We'll switch up half of them. We can do that because I'm in the kitchen and I've got all my tools at my disposal, right? So we'll switch it up and we'll do a few of them barbecue because I know Jen loves the barbecue version. So we'll do a few of them for that too. Uh, not a hard uh, substitution to make. Same exact recipe instead of buffalo. Uh, occasionally I have buffalo chicken, but not often. I do like buffalo, just don't have it as often as maybe I'd like. Yeah, and maybe it's not available, you know, or you don't have the, your preferable sauce or whatever, but we can do a few the other way too, just to show you how it works, how easy it is to make adjustments when we're doing our stuff. And if you ever want to make any of our recipes, I always say this time and time again, play with them. If you don't like mushrooms and we're using mushrooms, you can substitute that out for like bell pepper or whatever. Don't be afraid to mix it up. You know, you know what you like, you know what you like to eat, and that's totally cool. All right, meatballs are done. Let's take a little peek here. My temperature, we're getting there. No smoke yet. So I'm going to give that a little increase so we can get those chips going. And it's all right. We're going to go ahead and still put the meatballs on because we're going to get, like I said, it's a low and slow temperature. So on the temperature gauge inside, we're just under 150. Turn the heat up. It'll crank up real nice here. We're going to be shooting for right around, just like we would be smoking outside, right? Not Paul Malls, but on Traegers and Weber's and things like that. We're going to be shooting right around that uh, 225 to 250 mark here. So let's go ahead and get our meatballs on, get them working, because that smoke will come. We should be able to give you a good shot of that in a little bit. Yeah, she's getting warm, and that's good. Like I said, we've got other things to do. So these can sit back here. These can ride. And that's all right. Yep, she's getting warm. She's getting warm. Definitely hot on those handles. Babe, remind me, when I come back later, hot handles. Don't burn self, not cool. What is that? Hot handles. Not cool. Because then Jen's like, oh, let's go to the ER. Also not cool. And let's get that lid on. There's a little, uh, air vent at the top we're going to go ahead and keep that closed because we want there's not going to be a ton of smoke generated we don't want it to come out like we're smoking outside where we have a continuous flame uh, feeding everything we're going to go ahead and keep all the, that smoke that's in there because it's off of that dust so we want all that to just kind of work in there work around with each other it's going to be super good all right so now that we've got that done let's move on to chicken land right you down with that? I'm down with that. That's awesome. Thank you for everyone for joining us here on Friday Night Barbecue Party. We're inside, but it's still a party. Grab a drink of your choice, whether it's a beer, whiskey, lager, cocktail, or maybe a Capri Sun. It doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying yourself, you're relaxing, we're kicking off our weekend right. We just got our buffalo meatballs into the smoker. That's right, indoor smoking. You can do it with the right tools. Sat with a mead. Can't go wrong with a good mead. He must be a little Viking. Got that Norway in him like I do. And then we are just starting our second recipe of the evening, which we are going to do some buffalo chicken croissants. Yes, buffalo chicken croissants. Awesome appetizer, awesome finger food. Perfect for the weekend. We're going to go ahead and get our pan heated up here and drizzle a little olive oil. We don't want no sticky sticky in the pan. All right, 
and we are going to go ahead and get our chicken cooking. He says he's going to be living in Norway pretty soon. I am jealous. I am jealous. We have a contingency of friends uh, that have joined us on stream here that are from the great land of Norway. So uh, that's pretty awesome. Huh? Yeah, and we may move there too. You never know. We'll live in the fjords in barbecue and life will be grand. All right. So I've got some chicken tenderloins. You can do this with any kind of chicken you want, whether it's thighs or whatever. The reason I'm doing tenderloins is they're tender and they don't take very long to cook through. So we're going to go ahead and pop this open. And then I am going to season our tenderloins up with a little St. Louis barbecue rub. Pop that down. <laughs> Mark Brick, so many Vikings in this street. I love it too, man. I love it too. All right. And we are going to season up uh, our chicken tenderloins here. I'm going to grab my olive oil and just give them a little drizzle. Not heavy handed here, just very light. We just want a light coating because they're going to go into a hot pan here. Everything's working. I love it. I love it. We're having a party. All right. As long as I don't trip on that rug, everything's awesome. All right, and we're going to use a little St. Louis barbecue rub here. Once again, by the valley. If you can't tell, I'm a little, uh, little partial. And we're going to go ahead and season these guys up. Get both sides, get a nice even coating. Harkens, of course, to the style of St. Louis barbecue, hence the name. These guys will not take very long to cook. Not very long at all. Use your hand. Make sure it's nice and coated even. They aren't going to be served in the tenderloin form. Oh, so Buff is actually from the UK. He's an Englishman who was raided by a Norwegian woman. She did convert you. Yes, your minds were in the same place. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so we got our chicken nice and coated up here with our seasoning. Mark Bricks is lucky you. Cheers to you. Have a drink. You've earned it. And we're going to get our chicken on here, cook it in the pan. All right. Chicken's in the pan, life is good. Grab my tongs. Ta -ta 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 tongs. There we go. There's a lot of different tongs in this world. I prefer the cheapest tongs you can get because if you mess them up and they get dirty, they're only 99 cents to replace. And guess what? Jen doesn't get mad at me which is also a bonus, especially when you're having a Friday night barbecue party and maybe a couple drinks and you leave them outside and they get all nasty. Not that that's ever happened, but I'm like hypothetically, right? She's over there just like, you son of a bitch. All right. We've got our other pan uh, on lower heat up front. We're going to make a sauce in that. It's going to be super easy. I'm going to grab one more cutting board here from my stash of boards because I want to flip this out. This is for veggies. This is going to be for what we're doing here in a minute. Make some room. Make some noise. Vikings in the stream sounds like a dolly. <laughs> yes, it does. Vikings in the stream. Tell me what you mean. Row your boat across. The shore you're lost, raid a little village, take all, all that gold. You and me gonna burn it down together. You and me do it no matter the weather. I'm no dolly, but I'm trying, you know. Huh? Yeah, I'm Kenny. I got the beard and the mustache, right? Oh, yeah. Chicken smelling good. I need a little more heat on that bad boy. A little more. All 
All right. Chicken's going. Super awesome. Set my tongs there. Now I got a, the almighty task. There it is. All right. So when we're working with buffalo, right? Most people are accustomed to what? Buffalo wings, you know? That's the standard deal. B-dubs, all that good stuff. Buffalo wings, buffalo wings, buffalo wings, right? But buffalo can be applied to so many different things. If you check back on like different stuff, one of my favorite things I've cooked, and you can see actually a picture of it on the old Insta shizzle. Uh, I'll throw it up right over there at Montana Max BBQ. You can check it out. Uh, but I did uh, a take on buffalo wings, but we did actually smoked a head of cauliflower and then did buffalo cauliflower with it. Dipped in ranch is super awesome. Great way to eat vegetables. <laughs> Drinking beer with the wife and watching Max is a good time. Well, hanging out with you, Mark, is a good time for me. So thank you for that. And cheers. It's Friday night. Babe, raise your seltzer. Cheers. Uh, but you can do so many different things uh, with buffalo sauce and mix it up. It's not exclusively for wings, right? But when you are eating wings, what's the number one thing that is served with wings? Anybody? I'll give you a second. Not you. Not you. You look you don't have a mic. They probably heard you. You were so excited over there. What's the number one thing that's served with wings when you go out to, to most restaurants? Jen already got it. She was so excited. She loves she loves the trivia. All right, number one thing that serves with wings, beer. Hey, Winslow Wolf, good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. I am doing extremely well because it's Friday night. I am kicking it. Beer and onion rings, sauce, celery. Nobody's got celery. Jen, you were like the winner. <laughs> Kitchen confidence says, when I grow up, I want a beard like you. I can show you how to get that beard, brother. It just takes patience and a whole lot of time. Blue cheese, absolutely. 99% of the time, they are always throwing celery on the plate to dip in. You get that cool with that spice. I'm going to show you right now the ultimate substitution for celery. After you try this, you will never serve your wings with celery again. I'm spicy with some cool, but my face, but, but my face. Your face is beautiful whether you have a beard or not. Thank Howdy, you for being partner. here. Awesome, and thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. You know, you got to rock it. And up here in Minnesota land, this is the season of the beard. You got to keep your face from freezing off. All right, so here we go. The number one thing that you can substitute. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Check this out. Who knows what this is? It's not a rock, even though it kind of looks like it. Cook it like a rock. This is what you're going to do instead of serving celery when you make wings and your family. Seven streams into this show. So, yes, Kitchen Confidence is coming in with the knowledge. It is jicama. That is correct. Winner, winner, jicama dinner. Uh, this is the seventh episode of Barbecue Party. So we are streaming like several times a week. Wednesday, we have Wild Game Wednesdays. Uh, <laughs> he's talking some trash, too. Uh, Wednesdays, we do Wild Game Wednesdays, where we cook a lot of exotic proteins. We've done antelope, elk, rainbow trout, wild-caught rainbow trout. We've done, what else we done, babe? Venison wild boar, all kinds of stuff. And we have a lot of cool stuff on docks. So that's Wednesday's nights where we go wild game. Uh, what we do on Friday is what you're watching right now, where it's a barbecue party. And we have some drinks and we just do really fun foods, like party style foods or whatever, whatever we feel like. And then Sundays we do uh, game day smoke down, where we do like tailgating, home gating, and all that good stuff. It's, it is close. It is like a turn up. Uh, and then Sunday's our tailgating show, and then we do special events, and that's a good point uh, that I just brought up to myself here before I get going on this uh, 
It does. It's like a pear and an apple kind of got together and had a few drinks and things went sideways. Uh, yeah, like a weak pear, for sure. Uh, tomorrow night we are hosting a special event. I haven't put it on the schedule yet, but we are actually going to be doing right here. If I can turn it the right way on camera, we're going to be doing a special hosted party for Brook Lade, the scotch, where we'll be showing you how to make a couple really cool scotch cocktails. And then we'll be doing a watch party of uh, a scotch movie that is uh, Amazon exclusive which is really cool. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, that's gonna start at 8 p.m. We're gonna show you how to make cocktails. We're gonna sit down, have a drink, and uh, watch that show together. It should be a lot of fun. But anyways, back to what we're doing right now. Jicama. And I'm gonna actually peel this bad boy real quick. I don't wanna lose uh, track of chicken here. See, that's the one thing. When you're having a barbecue party, you can get lost having a good time. You don't want to let your food burn. You don't want to get let it get away from you. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a movie about all where Brook Lade is actually made in uh, the Scottish island it's from. It's like a documentary about the characters uh, that actually own this distillery and where it comes from. It's really cool. It's called Scotch: A Golden Dream. Uh, we'll be we'll be airing it tomorrow night though as a watch party and just chatting, having some drinks. But like I said, tune in at eight because before we run the watch party, we're gonna make uh, some smoke cocktails. I'm gonna show you how to actually smoke ice to make a smoke cocktail. What are you doing there, baby girl? Luna's my dog Luna's down here looking for scraps. I'm in a great mood. Got my fishing license and preparing for tomorrow fishing for blue bass and snakehead fish. Oh, jealous, super jealous. That sounds very exciting. I wish I could join you on that trip. I absolutely love fishing. It's been a while since I've been able to get out. But yeah, man, that is awesome. Smoke cocktails are super great. Super way to elevate your cocktail game with basic ingredients. It's not hard to do. There's several ways to go about it. Uh, but yeah, all that goodness is going to be happening tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and just start peeling down this jicama. I'll flip it over here, give you guys a little bit better view of what I'm doing. Just with your standard vegetable peel, we're just going to work our way around our jicama here. It kind of, it's kind of peels like a potato does, but a uh, little bit more solid than a potato. But you see how these, uh, it's coming off there. <laughs> Can we refer to that tool as a, it is if you get your fingers in the way, that's for sure. So we're just going to work around this real quick. Yes. So Jen's over there Googling goat Pilates. I know it's a thing. Yeah. And now I'm going to have to go. So you know what it is? yes, they do Pilates. Uh, I've heard of goat yoga. Goat yoga is big in the States here. They, climb all over and stand on their they stand on their backs. They don't. They don't. I want to report on goat Pilates when you get back. <laughs> Yell inducer. Yeah. All right. Come on, Hikama. There we go, work it around. Let's just take that outer layer off. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Easy, super easy. Just keep your fingers out of the way. And you'll be fine, everything will be fine. Just make sure you have a good vegetable peeler. Now, the bottom side here, see the root area there? All right. Don't mess with that. Don't waste your time working around that with the vegetable peeler. Take your knife and just cut that off nice and flat. See? Flat top it. And I'm going to set that here and get all this 
skin that we just shaved off into the trizzy. That's the hip name for trash. I'm bringing it back. It's called a trizzy for shizzy, my nizzy. And I'm going to check my chicken with my unusually long tongue. These guys are looking great. Temperature's getting up on our meatballs there. That's great. We should start seeing uh, some smoke here real shortly on those bad boys. Take your time when you're cooking your meat. It'll retain more moisture. Down with the kids. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm down with the kids. Gotta love it. All right. So when you flatten off the bottom, don't worry about scraping off all around that root perfectly. Got a spot there. Clean that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then when you flat top the bottom, right, it sits on your cutting board. It's not going to roll around on you and make things more difficult, okay? Get my Nakuri knife here, my vegetable chopper. Nice, large, flat blade. Awesome for cutting through things like this. There we go. Oh, nice. Delaware's in the house. That's where he's fishing at. It's always amazing to me the different uh, species of fish all around just the United States and the world and where you, where you go and what's popular and what you can catch. All right. There we go. I'm not going to worry about that nub right now. I'll save it for later. So we went ahead and sliced through our jicama. Super easy to do. And you can eat jicama raw. Just like that. Just like you would eat an apple. Yeah. It is cool. It's awesome that we can all hang out in a world, I mean, online like this and be from all over the place. So for tonight, we're just going to serve the jicama with a dipping sauce. Uh, yeah, we're going to season it. We season everything. This. This is what the internet is. You are correct because this is what we made it so. Cheers. I'm, I'm going to give it a little seasoning because that's always awesome and gives a little color. But we're going to turn these just into long strands here. Now, the cool thing I usually do with jicama, and we just can't do it because it's too wet outside and I'm not going to run outside and be like, hang on for a minute, I'll be right back. And you guys are like, where the hell did he go? But one of my favorite things to do is make jicama fries where we season them up and then put them on the smoker for about 15 to 20 minutes. They absorb smoke magically and they take a little of the moisture out and they are super awesome. Man, you guys uh, have any of the Asian carp where you're at? Speaking of invasive species, that stuff is nuts. All right. So we got our jicama all set to go. We'll season that right before we plate at the end. Because that's going to be like a, a beauty thing, a dusting thing, and a flavor adding thing. Yeah, no, you wouldn't want to fish for the, the Asian carp e either. They're uh, kind of baby sand shark. I bet that had to be an interesting experience. Uh, the Asian carp aren't like a standard carp. They're those ones that you see on the news that are like super big and fat and like knock people out of boats because they, uh, they jump out of the water. They'll literally jump out and they hit people in the head. And they just arrived in Minnesota in like the last... <laughs> Baby sand shark, do 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 do. Baby sand shark, do 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 do. Yeah, well, he got it, didn't he? Jen's like, I think that's a request. Well, that's what we do. We aim to please here at Montana Max. All right, so let's go ahead and scoot this jicama out of here for right now. Move a few things around. Just keep things nice and organized, or try to anyways. 
Grab my other cutting board. <laughs> what? Uh, no. Oh. Oh, there's some filtering. No, I, I get to see the full thing. But no, it, it grabbed it because uh, koi means penis and tie. So we'll have to adjust our filters because it seems like the man's getting us down a little, little bit. All right. Make sure this is over the flame. Turn that up just a touch. Turn that down just a touch. Our chicken is really looking good here. You cook it too quickly, right? That's what I was talking about a minute ago. If you cook it too quickly, you cook it too fast in a hot pan, you run the risk of two different things. Two different bad things. Number one, you can burn the outside and undercook the inside. So when you cut into it, it'll still be raw on the inside. Bad times, bad times. Don't want to serve that, get somebody sick, and it's disgusting. Uh, oh, it's good, man. You good. Don't worry about it. That ain't no big deal. You, did, you, you chill. It's all good. Uh, so don't burn the outside and undercook the inside. The other thing is, is if you cook the whole thing through, and say you're flipping it, you're watching it really close, but you're cooking too hot, it can dry it the F out. See, don't worry. You cool. Uh, <laughs> but you can dry it out. So then you have a really uh, dried out piece of meat that's going to be chewy and tough and not what you want. We don't at the moment. I'm in the process of adding a third camera. So I will have one hopefully mounted up here that'll be stove specific. Most of the action's up, up front today. That's why I try to do this weird aerial view. But stove camera is coming. We are going to have that in the near future. Chewy and hen, best pairing ever. That's like wine and cheese. They just go together. I, I'm a Star Wars dork. I love that. Can't argue with that. Points. I need to do like the Chris Hardware. Got to go grab some dogs. Awesome. We'll be here. We'll be here. We will miss you, but we will be here. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, thank you. I love the setup too. We're always working uh, to improve it as well. So I'm going to use my thermal pin here. And we are like there on temperature. Perfect, actually. Super perfect. So internal temperature for chicken, what? 165. That's how we make sure all the nasties are out and we're not going to hurt anybody. Let's go ahead and turn that burner off. We'll be working with the front one now. And there is, yeah, we can go up here, some beautifully cooked chicken tenderloin. Smells delicious, right where we want it, right at that 165 mark. We can let it sit there and rest for just a minute here on the cutting board. Let that juice inside uh, the moisture redistribute. Say what? How long have I been streaming? Not very. We're just about to hit uh, our two month mark. So yeah, so like this is the seventh episode of Friday Night Barbecue Party, so seven weeks total. So yeah, that's where we're at. And we're really happy that you're here with us because it'd be a lonely seven weeks if we didn't have <laughs> people joining us at all. So all right, here we go. Chicken's gonna be very hot. Easy way to do that, grab your tongs. Don't just grab it with your hands because these guys here, we are gonna dice up. I got the Actually, horses in the bag. Hey! <laughs> New subscriber. Let me click the messages. That is mad at black. Thank you so got much, the boosters. Like confidence. You just gave me a little cut kitchen comment. Riding on a horse. Ha, you can whip your horse. One more cutting board. We got all the wood cutting boards out today. Been in the valley, valley. You ain't Why been up off that porch now. Why are you doing that to me? Because we need a fresh surface for our croissant. <laughs> awesome. I'm all about kitchen confidence. I can see that. When you carry that as your name, you better be. 
Cheers to you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Anybody that subscribes, you don't have to worry about the ads, which is awesome. And for subscribers, you'll be happy to know Kitchen Confidence. We've got different sets of rewards that are going to be coming. Uh, we really want to give back that value for people that support the stream. Uh, oh, it's a facade. That's all right. You carry yourself like it's not. So, I mean, you know, don't hate the, don't hate the player. Hate the game. Uh, but we're always working to improve. And so thank you. All that support means the world to us. We appreciate it very, very, very much. All right. Let's grab our knife. Let's get this chicken cut up a little bit here. Oh, awesome. This is going to be kind of hard to see, but I'm going to hold it up here anyways. Yeah, and I'm trying to navigate the camera. We'll get a better camera, but it's awesome. It's juicy. It's moist. It's shredding up just perfectly. I got to have a little taste of that. Just a little taste. Yes, perfect. Just what you want chicken to be. Just what you want chicken to be. Highly enjoyable. Yeah, the, the, speaking of sharks, my dogs are starting to circle the kitchen island here like sharks. All right. Probably not today. I got a little much going on. We're not going to have dog cam today. <laughs> you don't have to be super precise with this because we are making buffalo chicken croissants with this. So the shredded style is totally cool. Don't take a lot of time being perfect with this. Just work it out because we're going to chunk this up, shred it up, and it's going to go inside of a croissant, right? Man, this is awesome. This is so awesome. I'm so tickled with how these guys turned out. Take your time with chicken. Take your time with your meat. Oh, okay, cool. Should have left those in the fridge probably. Heard that little beep there, that's fire alarm. That probably means I got some smoke going back there. So I'm gonna watch that. Yep, it's because that front burner real hot. Let's get that under there. You'll notice when we cook inside, we have the most sensitive indoor smoke alarms in our kitchen ever. So, all right, chicken. Chicken's good. Chicken's all together. And Kansas City Jen's over here warning me, saying our croissants have been sitting out for a little while. So we don't want them to get too sticky, so I'm going to throw down a little wax paper. Wax paper. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I put you down, things won't stick to you? Awesome. I'll check you out in a second when I put you on the board. Wax paper. Kitchen Confidence, had, they just took their smoke detector down in the kitchen because oh, yeah. it drove them nuts so bad. That is not even the right side of the box I'm opening. There we go. Brand new box, watch me struggle. You're still alive, you're still, still working. Babe, can you open this box for me? Because it's, never mind, got it. I was about ready to lose my shit on stream. The whole apartment's still standing. Well, that's good because you're here, so. It's amazing how those little things can just drive you over the edge, like when you're like trying to like, I don't basic things like you know, plastic wrap. Plastic wrap. Yeah. When I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I really gotta tie my shoes because I have to go to work. I mean that shit's a bitch, right? <laughs> All right, so we got that ready. I'm actually gonna throw these into the fridge for a minute because I gotta get the sauce going. You want your croissants cold? We got a lot of a lot of things going on. Because if you, they get too warm, that dough's going to warm up. They get sticky. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Makes it hard to work with. Oh, hi. Since I'm in here, I might as well grab myself a beverage. <laughs> Friday night barbecue party. Thanks for joining us. It's always a party. We thank you for everyone who's here tonight. Whether you're chatting or not, it's awesome that you're here. We really appreciate all of that. And regardless, make sure you treat yourself. 
That's something we need to get going too. Is we need everyone on Friday night barbecue party to get their own Montana Max koozies. That way, even if we're in Delaware and Texas, we can all cheers. And what's the word? When everything's together, solidarity. We can all cheers in solidarity. Camaraderie. That's a good one too. Pickle beer. What's pickle beer? We ain't drinking no pickle beer. This is Moon Man beer. All right. So we got to make a sauce. Croissants cook relatively fast. And so we got to make up some sauce. I'm going to move my meat cutting board. Pull up my vegetable cutting board. I got my jicama on because we're going to use this to Sour, I've never tried that. I, I, I love beer. That's one I would love to try. It just sounds interesting. So we're going to use half a block of a cream cheese here. Get that opened up. And I will save this for later for other cream cheese affairs. Get in there, buddy. There we go. Awesome. So we're going to use half, uh, half a block of cream cheese. Buff is busy chopping legs, all right? Hiding the bodies. And uh, watching the detectives. Buff's so cute. He's chopping up the legs. You know that song that I'm parodying? Watching the detectives, Elvis Costello? No? Jen's on a mission here to... It, well, I don't think Kitchen Confidence would lie to us. We got to find some. We got to get some of that. Jen looked up the beer. We're on it. Here, Jen wants to know if this is the right beer. Is that it? All right. So we got uh, the cream cheese going. In a second, I got to get the pan back on the heat. We got the pan on the heat. We're good to go. Temperature's down. Shouldn't be starting any smoke alarms off. Get the cream cheese going. Bam. Cream cheese in the pan. God, I love cream cheese. It's so delicious. All right. I'm give my hands a little wipe and wipe. We're going to let that work down uh, just a little bit here before we add our other ingredients. And then we're going to be using the Buffalo Sauce of Champions. Croy Valley Buffalo Barbecue and Wing Sauce. I love this stuff. It's better than uh, Frank's or any of that kind of stuff. I mean, that's too commercial, man. Way more flavor here, so we're going to be adding that in. Let's add it right now. Let's get all this working together. So I'll add a little of that in. And then we're going to add in some cheddar cheese. And we're going to work this down as a little creamy sauce. We don't want to get it boiling. We don't want to get it too hot. We just want to get it melted down. So let's get our croissants back out so we can get everything ready to go at the same time here. I gotta check my temperature there. I can smell the meatballs working over here too. So th those are just working away over there. All right, one of my favorite things in the world, these stupid croissant rolls. Why? Because they're so much fun to pop open. Standard croissants, crescents, same thing. Crescent, croissant, you say croissant, I say croissant, bam. And this didn't get too bad. This did not get too bad. So let's open this bad boy up. Maybe a little bad down at that side. What? I can't hear you. Won't need one, dear. 
It's all going to go in the pan together. But I do have bowls, yes. Probably a good idea. Then we're going to go ahead and take these little crescents, which are perforated for your convenience, and split them up here. Because we're going to kind of fold these up almost like you would like a, a little wonton. There we go. Let's put this, probably can't see this worth a shit. Let's move that back over. There we go. Don't worry, soon we are going to be having all this stuff here with better camera angles. We're just getting going in the streaming game, so we're always working to improve so you can see better, do better. And then, hey, Buff is back. That's what I'm talking about right there. Buff, Buff Bagel in the house. Oh, there's no cut logs. That is not good. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, we you all start. We got to start at the beginning, right? And that's where we're at. All right, so we got our croissants here. I'll throw this other one in here. Keep it cold. What's up, baby girl? And let's get our cheese mixture working here. It's already melting down, getting that cream cheese going. Buffalo sauce, cheddar cheese, and cream cheese. That's all it takes. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my chicken that we went ahead and diced up here earlier. Throw that in the pan with it. And let's go ahead and get all this mixed up together. Very easy. Very easy. It's already seasoned because we seasoned that chicken, the, the buffalo sauce. I'm going to add just a little bit more sauce to this. Give it a little nice little kick. We want that color, that beautiful buffalo color. And remember, we're going to be posting all these recipes that we do uh, up onto the website, uh, MontanaMaxBBQ.com. So if you ever create anything we make, or if you're ever like watching something and you're like, hello, uh, if you're ever inspired to make a dish that we've uh, made on the show and you made some variation, tag us. I'd love to see it. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, sharing with each other, working together, sharing ideas. This is awesome. Perfect consistency for what I want and what you would want. I mean, that's why we're here. We're trying to help you guys come up with some fun stuff to do. Yeah, I can definitely smell that slight hint of hickory here. Yeah, you should totally do that, man. And you can watch our past episodes on YouTube. Uh, you know, most of our stuff stays on uh, for 60 days. If you go back and you just see something, you can click through it and check that out. Or follow us on Instagram or Facebook. I mean, we post pictures of our stuff. Or if you have questions, email, carrier pigeon, jump in our DMs. Like, I'm happy to answer questions. And it doesn't even have to be about what we're cooking tonight or what we're doing here tonight. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's why I love doing this. All right. Let me show you here. I'll lift it up. Kind of looks, I know with this, like almost like uh, scrambled eggs, but you'll have to trust me that camera's got a little bit of a white balance issue. Uh, it's got a more orange tint to it. We'll set that right here. We will move Mr. Beer. And well, I'm going to let that sit for just a second because I'm pretty sure here that we should have some smoke going here. Let's take a little peek real quick. Yes, we do. You see that? See that coming up on camera, babe? Can they see it? It is a little far away. I don't have a, but that, that hickory smoke is working there. You'll be able to smell it here in a second, babe. I 
and a light balance issue with the force. The force is strong in kitchen confidence. Indeed, his mitochondrion count is extremely high. All right. So I'm going to need a baking sheet. Not that one. Huh? <laughs> All right, so we're going to get a baking sheet out for our croissants here. Give it a light spray with olive oil. We don't want them sticking. There we go. Give her a good spray. Olive oil in a can. I wish uh, I was the one that invented that because that's awesome. All right, and then we're going to take our cheese and chicken mixture here. I'm going to grab one other spoon. And we're going to fill our croissants inside the rest with our little chicken and cheese mixture. Don't overdo it because we want this to close up nicely, almost like a wonton. We're going to roll everything together. You're going to grab food. We're making food. Where are you going? I'm making you food. <laughs> awesome. We'll be right here. Thank you so much, Kitchen Confidence. All right. So let's get our chicken mixture right in here. We must be making them hungry. Jen's hungry. Jen's ready for food. So we're going to take that right in the middle of our croissants there. That should be good. All right. Then we're going to take the croissant, fold it up, and do a lovely little package. Like I said, like a wonton, right? Super easy. Super duper easy. Good call on that wax paper, babe. <laughs> hey, man, I eat Panda Express. We all out there, and you're like, what sounds good? I don't know. Panda Express, it's all good. I ain't judging on the panda. I ain't judging on the panda. Don't sweat that. I choose three items, not two. All right, we're going to get our croissants on here. Oh, and I forgot a step. I got talking about freaking Panda Express. That's all right, not a big deal. I can remedy that with the rest of them. Thankfully, I remember now. So we are going to, you know, we want cheesy goodness in these. Lots of cheesy goodness. And Jen is uh, not a fan of blue cheese. Blue cheese is what I call for in the recipe. If you have a, somebody in your house who doesn't like the blue cheese, substitute feta. And so we're going to put some feta cheese right in there. Yeah, for you, I picked up feta so you don't have to eat the blue cheese. I'm going to make some blue cheese ones too for me, but I got feta for you. Both good cheeses, both work equally as well. Not a big deal. Continue to fold these bad boys up and get them on the tray. So I've got one more round to do. Then we close them up. Close them up. Just like I said, like a little wonton. She's my wonton girl. She's my wonton girl. She has to be mine. Blue Stilton, yeah. yeah. It pokes through a little bit. That's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. It'll just be a little color that folds out to the edge. All right. Do one more here with the feta. I got one more little... There we go. Drop her in there. The flavor is outstanding. Flavor is outstanding here. I'm loving it. The 
It's all about building those layers of flavor together. You want to take your flavor to a whole nother level. Off the screen level. That's where you want your flavor. All right. So there we go. I got to just remember when I put these bad boys in the oven, what side the fed is on. And that's going to be the left-hand side. All right. I'm going to grab my other ones out. I get one more tube to pop. It's that old thing, right? Once you pop, you just can't stop. Here we go. Ready? Pop. Loves it. All right. Come on. Come on, Crescents. Do your thing. I just got to find the end. Get this bad boy separated. There we go. There we go. It's like wax paper, but with dough. What is that? What is what? Be more specific, Buff. My bagel friend, tell me. What is what? I need you to tell me what is what you are talking about. What is that? If you're talking to the roll that I just popped there, that is just your standard old USA Pillsbury Crescent Rolls. You've never seen that? Oh, man. They're in, they're in like right next to where in your grocery store, they'll be right next to where like the cream cheese and butter and all that is. It's just a Pillsbury Crescent Roll. It's a pre-made dough. So you, he's from the States. But yeah, it's pre-made dough and they have like cinnamon rolls and crescent rolls and all this other stuff that are so Pillsbury good and you take the outside wrapper off the roll and then, oh, he's from the UK. That's right. God, I'm so sorry. Please don't be offended by UK bread. Uh, but yeah, God, did, do they not have Pillsbury? I know that you don't drink your soda with ice and stuff, so maybe there's no refrigerated section for, you got to get this, man. We got to find a way to get you Pillsbury uh, in refrigeration. It's awesome. I'm just kidding. I know you guys have a refrigeration. Do they have refrigeration, babe? Yes. Yes, you do. Uh, yeah, and there's no ice and soda. And beer is served warm, too. They just pump it up. It's not like. You do? They said that Buff says they have. Things may have changed since the last time you went to Europe. You put ice in your water. That's the question from Kansas City Jen. They have cold beer as well. I, is everything that I've been led to believe is American a lie? Probably. Warm ale, maybe, he says. I think things have probably changed. I think maybe that was, they put ice in everything. I think maybe this is a thing that it was years ago. Maybe. Well, that's what Americans think. <laughs> I'm not the only one. It's not just us here, and we're like, man, we don't understand the world. I mean, that's what, that's what Americans think. All right, that's working good. Meatballs are working good. Let's get the second round, and these ones I'm going to be doing with blue cheese crumbles. But yeah, so you got to find Pillsbury dough rolls. they got to be in the UK. We need to figure that out. Jen, Google away. Pretend you're shopping in the UK. But it's, yeah, they're Pillsbury dough rolls. Take the outside, and then you just push your thumb. It says pop here, and they pop right open. And then you have doughy goodness right in front of you. It's always in, it's always, ales are warm. Okay. The more you know. This is what I love about streaming, is you make friends with people. Uh, hey, Mad Dog, thanks for coming back. Good to see you. Uh, that's what I love about streaming, though. It's not just like Delaware, Texas. We're making friends in the UK. We got friends in Norway, and where he will be shortly. And then, you know, it'll be like, I just moved here. And then our Norwegian friends will be like, hey, 
See, we're making connections. That's what, that's what it's about. Everybody making connections, coming together. There's enough bullshit out there tearing everyone apart. It's about coming together. All right, so we got our chicken mixture here, which is just super easy. Buffalo sauce, the chicken that we cooked up earlier. And cream cheese and cheddar cheese, which we're putting on our Pillsbury dough mix, which is just a crescent roll, refrigerated crescent dough mix. And then we are going to sprinkle that. Of course, some things from Norway as well. Yeah, absolutely. Why is streaming making you depressed, Mad Dog? Come on. You should be happy. You're, you know, that's what it's about. If it helps, you, you're going to give us an education about a, the, whole, the whole other hemisphere there, and I love that. All right, so these ones, we use feta on the first one. Uh, let's get some blue cheese, which is my favorite. I love blue cheese. I love making steaks with blue cheese, burgers with blue cheese. They don't sell Pillsbury in the UK, apparently. Jen just found out. We'll mail you some, somehow, some way. Even if to break. Jen's get. We have uh, sharp cheddar in there, so it's in the sauce is sharp cheddar, cream cheese, buffalo sauce, and the chicken. So that is in there as well. We're doing a whole bunch of cheesy goodness there. So it's not, not just blue cheese. That's just the crumble we're putting on the end. So in the sauce, uh, not, not, no bias, of course. Uh, we, we do have uh, cheddar in there, chicken, cream cheese, all together in buffalo sauce. And then we're just topping with a blue cheese crumble. So that's not Sarah Lee. It's not Sarah Lee. Okay, so in UK... Uh, the substitution would be Sara Lee croissant dough. And how do you puff pastry dough? Or, that, that's a good suggestion, Jen. Or you could use a puff pastry dough. It would give you the same effect. Except puffier, because it's a puff pastry. But very similar. Thank you to Jen for getting to the bottom of that quandary for us. And nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. At least that's what the commercial would have you believe. All right, and we're just folding these guys up here, just folding them up. There we go. Rocking and rolling. I cannot wait for this. I'm going to have to wait, but... This is going to be really good. Really, really big shoe. Really big. All right. Just folding up the edges here. Once again, chicken, cream cheese, cheddar cheese, buffalo sauce, and then a crumble of blue cheese. We also did our first ones with feta. Then we're wrapping them up in just a croissant pastry. into kind of like a wonton style wrap. You don't have to be perfect. Little character's okay when you do these. It says, uh, did you see that? It says it's harder, getting harder and harder to uh, get the Sara Lee in the UK. All right, so there we go. Rock and roll, croissants all done. Now we just need to put these guys on the pan, in the oven, 375 for about 10 minutes, 9 to 10 minutes. That's all it takes, all it takes. So there we go. Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. There we go. That's my girl. That's my girl. She's going to keep an eye on it for me. You, you, so Jen wants to know. Jen has a, a UK question. 
Do you guys have Alexa in the UK? They got it. Amazon's everywhere. Maybe it isn't, though. Good question. I don't know the answer. Do you have Alexa in the UK? Inquiring minds want to know. All right. So we've got the meatballs. Yes, meatballs are working right back here. We just put in our croissants into the oven, 375. This other pan I am going to use over here because after we get done with the meatballs, because they're smoking with a water pan, they're going to have kind of an off texture. They're not going to have an off texture, off color. So we're going to brown the outside of them by putting them in the oven under the broiler. But they are going to take on, it says, yeah, LOL. Well, we didn't know about the ice thing, so, you know. Where are you going, babe? You got to use the bathroom. I got to get the, I, I got a drink for you up here. Yes. Oh, Mad Dog's wife says hi. When you get out of the bathroom, you got to come say hi, and then I'll go use the bathroom. See, connections. That's what it's about. And we're having beers. We're having drinks. It's Friday night. We're feeling right. So let's take a little peek at those meatballs. We're going to get that stove cam. Uh, I'm in the UK, not the Stone Age. Touche, touche. I mean, no offense. You know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, smoky goodness. That might have been a little bit easier to see there. Uh, that smoke is working really well in there. There's a convection style cooking. Smoke is working together, all coming together. They got to be getting pretty close to temperature. <laughs> Thank you. I, <laughs> I'm glad it's all good. All right. Take a quick temperature here. Awesome. They're right where they need to be. That smoke is absorbing in there. If you want to do something a little bit more creative with your meatballs too while you're smoking them, put a little cube of cheese in there. That's always fun. Uh, we've done that before too. I work mainly nights just so I talk to a lot of Americans at the same Yeah. <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, it's one world. It's one world. We're all here. 228. Dang, you burn in the midnight oil and then some. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're spending a little Friday night. Hopefully, you don't have to work tomorrow and it's all good. I suppose working the night shift, you probably are a little bit conditioned to that side of the clock. All right. Oh, you're at work. <laughs> Even better. That's how you, that's how you uh, spend some time not worrying about it. All right. Let's get this pan spray. Because here in a second, I'm going to pull off the meatballs and we're going to put them in the oven, top rack, and get them, uh, get a little color to them. Remember, in the bottom of this, it does have a water pan. We are using a brown ale, whatever's common to your area. Here in Minnesota, we're big Lift Bridge fans. So we've got Lift Bridge flannel in there, which is a delicious brown ale, not a dark ale, but use whatever beer you like. I mean, you can't go wrong. Wow, national parks, that's awesome. I love that. Frying pan does work good for a sear. Absolutely, you can do that for sure. I just got the oven running. I've dirtied enough pans, so I'm just gonna throw them in there and I'm actually gonna flip on that broiler. That's what I'm gonna do, broil them up. Different techniques, that's looking good. Babe, you wanna take the mic for a minute, come say hi to people? Yeah, you do, because otherwise they can't hear you. You can just hold it just like this, like it's a microphone. You just oh, hold I it out here. Because I have to use the bathroom. Okay. I know you hate me. And I, hey! Okay, which camera am I supposed to look at? That one. There you go, babe. Oh. Everybody, Kansas City Jen, Hi. holding down the fart. You know I'm, okay. no, go. I'm not going to pee my pants, Mad Dog. Come on. <laughs> I mean, to make good TV, maybe I should do it. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it. Anyways, I'm going to be right back. Kansas City Jen. Answering your questions. All about right. Hey, City. hey, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is new for me here. <laughs> Stop it. Get out. <laughs> oh, I think I just got some cheers. Hey. I don't think he got cheers. <laughs> Sweet. Doing good. I'm getting hungry because he always cooks like super late at night or it feels late. Haven't eaten. So, like, dying for food, but, you know, good things are worth waiting for, right? 
so as you can see, I've got a big mess to clean up after this. Oh boy. But this is, um, actually I bought this thing for him, this um, smoker, indoor smoker. I don't know if you guys have actually seen it. I wish we had a camera we could zoom in. It's super cute, super cute. Um, red little kettle thingy that he's cooking the meatballs on. I don't know if you guys can hear me really good. I feel weird talking. I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Obviously, this is not a uh, normal thing for me to do. So kind of awkward, but whatever. <laughs> he takes forever. Oh, good. I'm making a fool of myself, just talking randomly, saying I'm things. Back. Oh, he hears me. Good. Yeah, they hear you loud and clear. Okay. I am going to clean, right. make him clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He really should. You're going to clean it all up. They said you have to do it. I will. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's the, my drink? You said you had a drink for me here. Yeah. You want a drink, babe? Well, not what you're drinking. No, oh, I've got a filter oh. right here for you. There you go. Oh, thank you. All right. She says cheers. Thank you, babe. Let's go ahead and get this clipped on. Let's get our meatballs going. Stream, stream pressure, they said, babe. Yeah. You did great. Yeah. I haven't thrown her to the wolves like that before. That's a first. So cheer, cheers to Kansas City Jen, everybody. <laughs> Cheer, Cheers for Kansas City Jen, keeping the stream going. That's why she's the best partner. And she's my partner in food sport, too. Nutbuster. Damn straight. It was a bad one. Buff Bagel giving you the cheers as well. Uh, she competes with us. We do professional food sport. If you don't know, and this is your first time joining us, we're a professional food sport team. Uh, we compete in World Food Championships, KCBS Barbecue. That's where my heart is. Steak competitions, all kinds of different stuff. We're actually getting ready tomorrow. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of cooking before we do our uh, special episode tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time here in the States where we are actually going to be taking you on a trip to Scotland with Brooke Lade, Scotch. We're going to make some awesome smoke cocktails and things like that, as well as we're going to do a host a watch party and watch Scotch, a golden dream, uh, which is all about where that Scotch is, uh, comes from. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I love it. And I love love. And I love you guys for being here. And thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for all the support. All right. Time to get some meatballs on a pan. And now I gotta get my fun little gloves. That's my glove dance. You like my glove dance? All right. Man, I wish I had some 80 year old scotch. I wouldn't have a house then, but I'd have 80 year old scotch. All right. Awesome. Let's see how I can get these out with a fork. Actually, you know what? I haven't even busted them out. I'm so sorry. If you're a first time viewer and you haven't joined us before, and if you're a long time viewer, thank you for both. But if you're a first time viewer, you haven't met our friend, Spoonie McSpooderson. My favorite spoon in the whole wide world. He comes along with me on every cooking adventure. Oh, that camera died. My burner's on. That's fine. Let's turn that front burner off. Thank you. Well, that's all right. Let's just flip this over. We can not worry about that camera because everything's pretty much done on the stove. I probably lost a connection. I have a tenuous connection on that one. But we got the main camera, and I'll show you everything right up front, right up close and personal. So anyways, like I was saying, Spoonie McSpoonerson, my favorite spoon in the whole wide world. And we're going to just take these off because this whole thing's going to be very hot. And let's get our meatballs on the tray. Oh, well, shit. That's the way it goes sometimes in streamland. Plugged in, obviously loose. All right, I'm going to walk this up here, and you can see what I'm talking about. There's my timer for my croissants going off, too. See how it's not like that 
super dark, you know, crusty out, outside meatball color that we want. I mean, they're edible, they're at temperature, everything's safe to eat. We want a little bit more color on them. Let's check croissants too. Alexa, stop. Another, uh, probably two minutes on those. Alexa, set timer for two minutes. Thank you. All right. Let's get our meatballs on here. I'm going to go ahead and kick on that broiler because that temperature for two minutes should be fine to finish up those croissants. So we're going to take these meatballs. And we're going to broil these bad boys right in the oven there. <laughs> it wasn't Alexa's fault. I told her what to do. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. It's on. It's broil time, baby. Baby girl, it's time to broil. All right. Because it's on. The broiler's ready to go. It's about time to get myself another Montana Max beer. Because it's Friday night barbecue party. And thank you, everyone, for being here. We really appreciate it. Life is good. We got good friends here on the stream that have joined us this evening. There we go. All right. That's good. This is good. Life is good. Time to get the meatballs broiling. Just a minute more on those bad boys down there. Oh, good. So competitive cooking, right? So we started, uh, th there's several variations of competitive cooking, and that's uh, what we do. Uh, Alexa, stop. Now Alexa's fired. Uh, <laughs> So competitive cooking uh, takes a lot of different forms. When we cook in Kansas City Barbecue Society competitions, we're cooking four different meats. That's ribs, chicken, pork butt, and brisket. You turn in six slices or legs or bones or whatever of each item, and those get judged, and then you get scored on those. Uh, we do SCA, which is steak competitions, where you cook a ribeye steak. They also have ancillary, so we do... Uh, that can be anything. That can literally be anything from wings to egg dishes to whatever. <laughs> he says, I just picture you opposite each other in trash talk while you baste the chicken. We don't, we trash talk other teams, uh, mainly Croy Valley, because that's the fun one to do. Uh, but usually we get stressed and then we're like, ah, but we were actually, the more, Competitive cooking has actually made our relationship stronger because it's taught us how to communicate better and how to work under stress better. When we first started, we were a freaking mess. But we've, you know, every time we get better and grow and stuff, and it's been really good for us. Uh, and then World Food Championships is 10 categories. We qualified number one in Minnesota for uh, the sandwich category. Uh, this year it got delayed due to COVID. So next year we'll be competing in Dallas, Texas, uh, in the sandwich category. Sweet. Let me know what time you're going to be cooking your burgers. Uh, but this year they went virtual with their competition. So tomorrow we'll be cooking a ton of uh, virtual recipes with pictures and stuff to be entering the virtual world food competition. And you have to be qualified in world food in order to take part in that. Uh, so there's prize money at stake in this. It's a big deal. So wish us luck in that. Yeah, man, thank you. I appreciate it. We got in uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So, yeah, we can make that. Uh, that'll be 4 p.m. Central time. Mark her down. Uh, but, yeah, we did an awesome take on uh, what was the sandwich you made? I can't even remember right now because I'm, like, worried about Monte Cristo. We did a take on a Monte Cristo, which was really awesome. Oh, those are freaking right about perfect. Time for fun gloves. What's up? 
Yeah, they're done. They're done, they're done, they're done. All right, here we go. Put one of those down there. Two of those down there. Then we pull out a hot tray. Fun gloves. What do you think, babe? Yeah, they brown. Yeah, they're done. They're done. All right, I'm going to hold this up. What kind of sandwich is that? Heard of it. No idea what it is. So the Monte Crisco is typically like a deep fried sandwich. We did a different take on it, almost in a, like a kind of a French toast fried style. Uh, but it's got ham, cheese, powdered sugar, uh, and it's all fried together. And then it's served with a berry jam on the side, usually like a raspberry jam. We infused a beer into our raspberry jam. It was super, uh, super awesome. All right. There is our buffalo chicken croissants. Look at those. Golden brown. Super awesome. Watch out, buddy. My cat wants one. All right. I'm going to get these on a plate, and then we are going to dress them up. And since I got that broiler on, I just got to keep my mind on those meatballs because we don't want to – we spend so much time smoking them. Yeah, kind of like dumplings. Absolutely kind of like dumplings. Uh, I spend so much time smoking those meatballs and getting them right where I want them that I don't want to get all that – three cats. We got one large cat that's so about the size of three cats. But I don't want to get those meatballs where they dry out and we turn them into crispy critters. All right. Yep, we can turn that fan off. And the burner. There we go. All right. The intensity level just dropped a little bit. Yeah, Mad Dog does. <laughs> if you think you can. All right, so I'm going to plate these up. I'll hold them up to the camera since our other camera uh, shut down on us so you can see everything. I'm going to take these guys and put them back here, give myself a little more room. There's our ginormous cat. There's Mr. Deal. He's like, I want some of that buffalo chicken. It's hard to, t hard to tell where you stop and Deal begins. What's up, dude? Wow. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. So when we're plating, always use odd number of things. When you use odd numbers, it becomes more visually attractive. That's why we use odd numbers. I'm going to pop right over here, and we are going to garnish these with two things. Mad Dog loves them. He is, he's a main Coon. He's super cool. Uh, he's just very chill, kind of acts like a dog, responds to his name. Love that freaking cat. All right. So we're going to dress these up with two different things. And what we're going to do here is real quickly, chives. Super awesome. They're kind of like mini onions. My broiler doesn't seem to be broiling for some reason. I got it. I got it. It was off. I don't know if I hit it when I went over there or what the deal was. The fabled black lion. <laughs> Ooh, b bacon and pepperoni burger. Love it. All right, so I'm going to just dice up some chives real quick here. So I'm going to be using, because uh, that spice of the buffalo chicken, right? I'm going to be using uh, right here. I know that's hard to see, but it's a cucumber ranch. So it's just basically a ranch dip. It's got little tiny, tiny mince pieces of cucumber in it. Works great with buffalo. 
because that cucumber is nice and cool, pairs nicely, adds a little texture against that spicy buffalo sauce, all right? All right. So I'm gonna take my drizzle spoon and we'll just go real quickly. Do some lines. Kind of like an asteroid feel. I'm just, go just going quick here. All right, so we got our ranch down. You can serve it with a side to dip it into. Then I'm gonna take my chives. We're gonna chive bay this bad boy up. Got a little carried away there in the middle, that's all right. See, and if we were doing food sport with this, I'd be all over these chives and everything with a freaking tweezer to place this stuff. That's how serious it gets for us. Presentation's a huge deal when it comes to food sport. All right. And I will walk this up here. There we go. Buffalo chicken wrap croissants with a cucumber ranch and chives. Let's see if I can get, there we go. That's even better, there we go. All right. I didn't, but you could. You absolutely could. I put onion in it, just straight up onion. Yellow onion is what we put, uh, no we didn't. We didn't put any onions in it, just chives on top. Onions went into the meatballs, sorry, my mistake. You could absolutely add scallions to it though, for sure. Very good. We are gonna taste it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage, Haleen from Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City Jen. I'll get you a fork too. There she is. Meatballs are coming. Yeah, go for it. Don't be bashful. No, I'll get a, I'll take a picture with the, the other ones we have. It's all good. Mm. Make sure you get the chicken. Make sure you get the sauce. These are the feta ones. Don't worry. No blue cheese there. It is hot. Mm. What do you think? You like it? Mm -hmm. Let me try a bite. Mm. I always give you first bite. I'm always a little Very nervous. The, oh, get your confidence. Welcome back. You missed the, the Kansas City Gen uh, wrestling entrance. That's so rich. That is super good. This is not too spicy for me. No. No. Just right. I'm going to have another bite. Yeah, I'm too. I told him, yeah, I tried to not eat this one. Yeah, then no. <laughs> You're always hungry. Oh. All right, go for it. They take the whole thing? Take the whole thing. Because we got meatballs coming. We got meatballs coming. So let's get on the meatballs right now. Mmm. So good. And so easy. So easy to do. Really yummy. <laughs> Buff Bagels are uh, re editing his old wrestling videos. It's weird. It's all like kismet how it all comes together. All right. I'm gonna pull these meatballs out. They are starting to look real good. So just like we would on the barbecue, right? I need a little bowl. I need a little bowl. There's a little bowl. And I need my basting brush, which is right here. And this is gonna take just moments. Just moments. So I'm gonna go ahead, pour a little of that buffalo in here because we're making buffalo meatballs. I'm gonna take my brush. And we are just gonna brush our meatballs down. I'm really sorry that we lost our one camera due to the power issue with it. I will make sure to show you this on the camera up front. Because of course, seeing is believing. 
We're going to base these guys down. With a little of this buffalo sauce. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> what two things you got to get from the store there, Mad Dog? What's on the list? What is on the list? I know how it is to go to the store. I go all the time. That's all right. Don't worry, I'll be with you, man. If you only have your phone, we can work with that. It's all good. All right, so we got our meatballs covered all the way around here, liberally, liber liberally. I'm from Montana, I can only say so many words. Ah, oh, orange chicken, you can't judge orange chicken. Oh, special sauce, I love it, I love it. Uh, orange chicken is delicious. No one should judge orange chicken. Buff Bagel hasn't been to the store in seven months. Are you ordering food or you have not ate in seven months? How do you not be to the store in seven months? Instacart. Instacart. Yeah, maybe he's got the store coming to him. Buff Bagel's got it figured out. I don't go to the store. The store comes to me. Well, I am Buff Bagel. All right. So we got our pan. We're going to throw these under the... Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's a history to the orange chicken. Oh, well, yeah, that's even better. The mix of ordering food and then catching his own food, like the whole fishing conversation earlier. Lurk and eat. Lurk and eat away, brother. All right, so here we go. Get them up here. Beautiful buffalo sauce. Try not to lose them off the pan here. All basted up. Back under the broiler just for a minute or so. We don't want to burn that sauce. There's a lot of things in that sauce. We don't want to burn it. We just want to get it nice, let it set for a minute, and we're going to be good to go. Let's see. What do I want to put? I can put those on a plate. I can put them on a cutting board or put them on a plate. They'll look good on a blue or green, blue or green, blue or green. Green. Green? green. Are you sure? Yeah. Green and orange. I like it. Good choice, babe. Uh, American Chinese is not Chinese. It's not. No, it's not in most places. There are some places that do it right, but very few and far between. I am with you, uh, Buff Bagel, that most of that is like an Americanized, very not so good version. That's the way it is. Mad Dog wants green. Jen wants green. We've gone green. We're going green. I'm happy with the choice. I got walked up to the cupboard and I got really stressed out there. All right, so we're just going to watch this just for a minute. We're going to pull this bad boy out, and then we'll plate these guys up well. They should actually probably be good to go. Yep. Doesn't take long. Doesn't take long. Little fire alarm. Not bad. Not bad for how sensitive are. I'm, never mind. <laughs> it's okay, boo boos. Like I said earlier, the mo there that was not too bad. Most sensitive one. We're gonna we're gonna turn our kitchen one off. We're gonna turn that kitchen one off. All right, let's get rid of these guys. Let's grab a fresh pair of tongs. We have a vent. It's just a shitty vent. These look great. That sauce set up nicely. Let's get these meatballs down here. On the plate. On the plate. Don't fill up over there on your, your uh, buffalo uh, chicken croissants there. Because you got to try a meatball. Once again, since we're doing the buffalo, we are going to garnish these again. <laughs> Mad Dog says, tell, tell me you want a new kitchen. We just did our bathrooms, Mad Dog. Lay off, man. 
All right. So once again, get my drizzle spoon. If you don't have a drizzle spoon, you should get a drizzle spoon. It's the most awesome thing. So there's our drizzle spoon. See how that's shaped? So you can actually draw lines and do all sorts of fun drips and things like that. Drizzle spoons are amazing. And we are going to go ahead. Just go across here. I'm going to go kind of uh, abstract Picasso with this one. My dog's underneath my legs. I must have dropped something. Okay. Then we are going to go ahead. Chives are always good when you're doing the buffalo deal. <laughs> Hammered copper oven hood. And a pot filler, yeah, and one that is, connects to Alexa. Let's just go all the way. And then this dish we are actually going to add, you may have forgot because we've been having such a good time, our jicama sticks. So we're going to add our jicama sticks, which are going to act as our celery substitute. Trust me, try it. You will love it. We're going to stack these bad boys. Just like that. Just like that. All right. You guys ready to see the meatballs? I'm going to hold them up here. We usually cook outside, bad dog. We usually do, but it's so wet. It's so wet. It's our whole, it'd be damn near dangerous. All right. You guys ready for the meatballs? For show, sure, says Peace Out Jen. She just wants to eat them. There is our garlic buffalo smoked meatballs, smoked with hickory. And then we went ahead and garnished with ranch, chives, and then we've got our jicama sticks on the side. If you want to add a little kick, to your jicama stick. Take your favorite barbecue rub. That is right. That is what slip shoes are for. Take your little barbecue rub, add a little dusting onto them. You just give a little seasoning, something that's heavier in paprika, right? Because it'll give that nice red color. and you will be good to go. I gotta take a picture of this one, babe, before you tear into it. Don't worry, it'll be fine. All right, quick picture. I'll show it to you one more time. All right, babe, you ready to try one of these? <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Then you can use this ranch as a dipping sauce as well, babe. We'll get you a fork. Let's get you a fork. Yeah, have a hickama stick. Well, you wait for your fork. Yeah, go ahead. It's for anything. Ranch is for anything. If you're in America, ranch is for anything. I like these. Jen loves jicama. I do too. That's why I substitute instead of celery. Really good. All right, eat my meat. Ha ha ha. All right. Ready? Go ahead. Try the meatball. You are missing all the food. <laughs> I'll hold it up to the camera for you, kitchen. <laughs> I got to see if I can find me one of them there pear turnips. That's good. What do you think? Really good. Really good. Give her a dip in the ranch dip, too. Not to no, not too spicy. Not bad at all, is it? It's really good. All right. Yes, jicama. <laughs> For sure. All right. 
in Kitchen Confidence, I got to show you one more time. Here we go. One more time, just because my other camera. There we go. So we've got our hickory smoked, indoor smoked, by the way, meatballs topped with the cucumber ranch and chives, and then seasoned jicama. Super easy. Sorry it's not the best angle. It looks a lot better. Jen approves. Cameras. Huh? You need to get more cameras. We need more cameras. Yes, we do. You're absolutely right. Thank you. You are very welcome, babe. I'm you, gonna want more. Take it with you. I don't even keep it. I just want a little bit. Just take it. Okay. Just take it. You know you want it. Just take it. How does the texture differ from French fries? When you cook them, uh, not like it's not like French fries at all. I just call them fries because of the shape. Hey, welcome back. All right, bring the plate back. Both plates. Huh? I, one, of our, one of our followers just showed up at the very end. I want to show them what we made. I, thank you for joining us. Once again, I've on window. Je oh, my God. You, like, how's that? Oh, my God. She's, Kansas City Jen's so small, but she is, like, she just, like, went to town. So, okay. yeah, okay. <laughs> so we just did buffalo-style uh, meatballs that we served with a jicama stick. Stop eating it. I'm sorry. I'm not eating it anymore. Wait a second. Oh, my God. So we made buffalo-style meatballs that we used on an indoor smoker with hickory smoke and then seasoned jicama straws. I feel like you should put it on a tin. She's, she's still going to be happy. Don't feel bad. She will take it back and finish it off. There used to be more on this plate, but just to give you an idea, so right here is buffalo chicken croissants. I can eat that one. But here. Did I eat four? Three. <laughs> four. It doesn't matter. I'm, I gave them to you to eat. No, you're fine. I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah, she's always hungry. She's so small, I don't know where she puts it all away. All right. This will be a good picture here, too. All right, and so you can, yeah, bless her heart indeed. So there's the inside. Let's see if I can get a good. So we cooked up uh, chicken tenderloins, and it's mixed with cream cheese, cheddar, feta. We did blue cheese ones, too. Feta crumbles and a buffalo sauce, all wrapped up into a croissant roll where we threw them in the oven. Perfect finger food. Obviously, Delicious. obviously people love them. Sure is you do it in not competitive eating. I've done competitive eating. I, no. Not Jen. She should. No. By the way, she puts it the fuck away. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was, it, it, they turned out really awesome. I'm really happy with them. I haven't even tried the meatball yet. I'm going to real quick. Awesome. And you can taste that smoke flavor in those meatballs. Yeah. With very little wood that we used in the indoor smoker. Because we set up our smoke alarm, but it wasn't because of the wood. It was because of other things in our smoke alarms being sensitive. Awesome. Taste the buffalo. Taste the hickory. Not overpowering. All right. Now this is live right now. We should stop by later, Noxious. We'll try to do that once we get our complete mess cleaned up. I would be happy to get you the recipe for the chicken croissants. I'm sorry I'm talking with my mouth full. Meatballs are freaking delicious. Croissants, freaking delicious. I'm going to get you the recipes for those because we are going to put those up on our website. Oh, meatball. I will. I will. Eat. I try. I've got more over here. I've been... Holding some croissants back here so Jen doesn't rifle through them all. All right. So let's, let's pull everything, pull myself together here. I'm having a meatball freaking orgasm here, and it's awesome. Cheers to everyone that joined us here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you to the new followers, new subscribers. We really appreciate you all. It's a big moment for us. 
and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this such awesome community like you guys being here with us. It really means the world to us, all right? Trust me, I say that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and let me give you the, let me give you the big wrap up here. For recipes and all that, you can follow us on MontanaMaxBBQ.com. That's MontanaMaxBBQ.com. Check out our Instagram, also MontanaMaxBBQ, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. We have different content go across all of our platforms where we do lots of different fun stuff. But of course, Twitch is my favorite, and I'm so glad that I'm here with you guys. Tomorrow night, we are having a special event. We are taking you on a trip with Brooke Lade. Mark Brick, good night, brother. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are taking a special trip to Scotland and we are going to be making smoke cocktails. I've spent a lot of time in my life bartending with Brooke Lade from Scotland. And then we're going to be having a watch party where we watch Scotch, a golden dream. So feel free. That starts at 8 PM central standard time here in the States tomorrow. I got a little scotchy right here to say cheers for this special moment that we get to share with all of you. And that is smooth. That is really good. So thank you to everyone who checked it out. Thank you to all of our sponsors that work with us down here. Gunter Wilhelm Cutlery, the only knives that we use at home in the kitchen and on the competition scene. Con Coolers for keeping everything cool, whether we're out off the grid camping or going to a competition. The Beard Struggle, who makes this what it is. Croy Valley Foods for all their sauces and seasonings. And of course, Paws, because we love animals and you should too. You can check them out in our About section. Thank you so much for being here. Jen and I love you to pieces. We can't thank you enough. And remember, as always, for those about to cook, we salute you. <laughs>